welcome back to my channel in this video let's understand regarding the nerve injury and a very important concept which is repeatedly asked in your examination that is valerian degeneration so in order to understand the nerve injury let's briefly understand the structure of the nerve or of the axon once again so this is the structure of a myelinated axon and this part what we are seeing here this part is what is called as the axis cylinder which is nothing but the axon because this is a myelinated nerve fiber, this axis cylinder or the axon is surrounded by so many layers of myelin. So this number two, what I have labeled is your myelin sheet. Now this myelin is formed by a cell which is called as the Schwann cell. So this number three is the Schwann cell and number four, what is labeled here, this is the nucleus of the Schwann cell. The Schwann cell also has a membrane of itself and that membrane is what is called as neurilemma or it is also called as the neurolemma. So this neurilemma or neurolemma is the one which is the outermost layer or outermost covering of the axon. The same thing is depicted in this diagram but this is the longitudinal section. So this is our myelin what we are seeing here okay. This is our node of Ranvier. Remember that myelin sheath is also referred to as the medullary sheath and this nucleus what we are seeing here this is the nucleus of the Schwann cell and this part the centermost part is what is called as the axis cylinder or it's the axon proper which is surrounded by the medullary sheath which is nothing but the myelin sheath and as here we are seeing the outermost layer is what is called as the neurolemma or the neurilemma. Next let's understand the different grades of nerve injury. There are two grading systems used for the nerve injury. One is called as the Sunderland's classification. Another one is called as the Sedan's classification. Under the Sunderland's classification we have five categories of nerve injury and under the sudden classification we have the three categories of nerve injury. So the grade one nerve injury is the one where only the myelin sheath is injured. The grade two is the one wherein there is injury of myelin as well as axon. The grade three is the one wherein the structures which are injured in the grade two that is the axon plus myelin plus the endoneurium is also injured. The grade four is the one which encompasses the grade 3 plus the perineurium injury and last is the grade 5 which includes the grade 4 plus the epineurium. And coming to the sedans classification, we are having three grades here. One is called as neuropraxia. Neuropraxia is where the structure injured is only the myelin. Axonaut meses wherein the structure injured is myelin plus the axon and we have the neurot meses wherein there is transaction of the entire nerve. That means neurot meses is equivalent to the grade 5 injury under the Sunderland's classification. So this is how the injuries look like. Okay, So this is the normal axon. This is what is called as neuropraxia wherein there is injury only to the myelin sheath. This is called as axonaut meses wherein there is injury both to the myelin sheath as well as to the axon and this is the last grade which is called as neurot meses wherein there is entire transaction of the nerve fiber. Now what are the changes which occur in the nerve after the injury? There are two types of changes. One is deterioration or impairment of the function which is called as degeneration. Now if this degeneration is occurring distal to the injury, that degeneration is what is called as a valerian degeneration or it is also called as the anterograde degeneration. For example, like this is the cell body and this is the axon and if there is an injury here, so whatever degeneration is occurring distal to this injury that is in this part of the axon, that is what is called as the valerian degeneration or it is also called as the anterograde degeneration and the degeneration which occurs in this remaining portion of the nerve fiber or of the neuron that is what is called as the retrograde degeneration. Now once there is degeneration occurred there could be also regrowth and that is what is called as regeneration but regeneration we cannot guarantee 100% it depends on so many factors if the factors are favorable then there can be regeneration of the nerve. Now first let's understand what are the changes which occur in the valerian degeneration. So valerian degeneration is the one which starts within 24 hours after the injury. So three important changes occur in the axis cylinder. The axis cylinder is swollen and it is irregular in shape. Later on it is broken down or it breaks down into smaller fragments. And even the neurofibrils which are present in the axis cylinder they are also broken down into granular debris. Later on the myelin sheath also disintegrates and the myelin sheath is converted into fat droplets. Whereas the one thing which remains unaffected is the Schwann cell and the membrane of the Schwann cell which is called as the neurilemmal sheath. After this what happens is that this part where this 
disintegration of both the axis cylinder as well as the myelin sheath has occurred that part is invaded by the macrophages so what do these macrophages help in they help in removing this degenerating axon fragments they help in removing the degenerating myelin as well as cellular debris so now like this is our neuron okay and this is the injury or this is where the nerve injury has occurred so what we are talking about is the changes which are occurring in the distal part to this axon so now what is remaining here is there is axon has undergone de disintegration the myelin sheath which is surrounding this axon has also undergone disintegration so what is remaining here is an empty tube that is what is called as a neurilemmal tube so neurilemma has become completely empty so now after this what happens to this empty part the schwann cell cytoplasm is the one which fills up this neurilemma so this is what we are supposed to write if they are asking us specifically regarding the valerian degeneration now next let's understand what are the changes which occur in what is called as the retrograde degeneration and remember that it begins within 48 hours after the injury and it involves the cell body as well as the axon which is proximal to the injury so what are the changes which occur in the cell body the nasal granules which are present in the cell body they are going to disintegrate and that process is what is called as chromatolysis the golgi apparatus the mitochondria the neurofibrils are also fragmented the cell body which is there it swells up why does it swell up because of the entry of the fluid from outside to inside so once the cell body has swollen up the nucleus is pushed to the periphery so nucleus becomes eccentric in position and if the injury is still more severe at times we also see that the nucleus is extruded out of the cell the neurofibrils which are present in the cell body they also disappear so these are the changes which occur in the cell body during the retrograde degeneration what happens to the axon the axon nothing is going axon the same degenerative changes are going to happen as we have seen in the valerian degeneration so this is how the degeneration occurs now coming to the regeneration process regeneration means regrowth and regeneration is going to take place after the degeneration now for regeneration to occur the factors should be favorable for regeneration so what are the factors which help in regeneration of the injured neuron the gap between the two ends of the axon it should be less than three millimeters the two ends like two ends should be almost in the same line and the axonal damage should be away from the soma like this is our cell body if it is very close to the soma the damage then the regeneration may not occur so the conditions for regeneration become unfavorable as it is more far from the cell body or from the soma the regeneration takes place more then the nucleus within the cell body should be still intact the neurilemma should be present and remember that in the central nervous system the regeneration is less successful and rare compared to the peripheral nervous system where the regeneration is more successful regeneration also depends on the availability of the neural growth factors this is very important and these neural growth factors are the one which are called as the neurotropin so what are the regenerative changes which takes place in the axon the proximal end of the axon so let's say this is the cut part of the axon and this is the proximal end and this is the distal end the distal end is having the neurilemmal sheath and this is an empty tube so what happens is the proximal end of the axon it develops it starts developing the sprouts okay like how we put the seed inside a uh, mud and we give it water and suddenly sprouts develop similar to that the sprouts begin to develop from the proximal end of the axon and these sprouts or the fibrils they begin to move towards the distal end then these fibrils they are going to enter into this empty neurilemmal tube and this entry of the fibrils towards the neurilemmal tube is guided by the schwann cells okay it's guided by the schwann cells now there is active growth of these axonal fibrils and the axis cylinder is established by the three months of time now once there is formation of the axis cylinder after that there is also myelination of this axis cylinder and for the myelination to occur it takes another one more year so these are the very important regenerative changes which take place in the axon now what regenerative changes which take place in the cell body i had told you that the nasal granules have completely disintegrated and that is called as chromatolysis the first thing to occur is the nasal granules they begin to reappear the golgi apparatus appears back and the cell body had taken in a lot of fluid and it has swollen up now the cell body begins to lose this excessive amount of fluid and this results in the cell size of the cell body decreasing and the size becoming ultimately normal 
the nucleus was pushed to the periphery now the nucleus comes back to its original central position so all these changes what i am telling you that is called as the anatomical regeneration that is called as the anatomical regeneration the functional regeneration is going to still a uh, take a longer time so this is what is regarding the nerve injury thanks a lot for listening